This is Josh Mandel with another episode of A Guided Walk Through Fire. And I'm going to continue our discussion of terminology and vocabulary in fire this time around. Uh, as a quick recap, uh, in the last sessions we learned about the codable concept and coding and code data types in fire, and we looked at some key places where those different data types are used. And uh, we thought about some of the design considerations that would lead the authors of the fire specification to choose one of those data types in particular over the other. What we're going to do in today's session is understand a little bit more about how those various values, uh, how those various data types are bound to particular code systems or vocabularies. Uh, and so we'll look at a few of the examples that we talked about in uh, the last couple of sessions. I'm going to start off with the patient resource and we'll look at the observation resource as well and look at places where certain terms in these resources are bound to specific vocabularies or terminologies in fire. So the last time we looked at uh, some examples like patient gender, and we saw an example of this value set here, and we, we looked through it. And similarly, we, look, we looked at observations, uh, and we looked at the observation.code and observation.category, and we noticed that those were tied to specific value sets as well. What I want to dig into today um, is, first of all, to see where this kind of information can be discovered in the FHIR specification itself. Uh, and so, yes, when you're reviewing one of the data models in FHIR, this description and constraints column has lots of good information um, about where and how different coding systems are used. But if you scroll down a bit farther, just past the end of this uh, tabular view is a terminology bindings list. And this can show you uh, a view that's more specifically focused on vocabularies. And this shows you all the different data elements in the resource that are coded in some way. And we can see, for example, there's patient gender, marital status, uh, communication language, all those things are coded values in FHIR. Um, and we see that for each of these things, there's a, a type of binding. So we're looking at the terminology binding type, which could be required or extensible or preferred. Um, and we'll talk about what each of those means. Before we do, let's take another quick look at the observation resource and scroll down to that same terminology bindings table here in observation we can see here there's a lot of coded data inside of an observation or codable data inside an observation. And again, we see uh, examples of fields uh, that might be bound as extensible or preferred uh, or just examples. And so let's talk through what each of those means. Let's begin by looking um, at the weakest level of binding, uh, which is what's called the example level. And so in FHIRE, an observation code saying what it is that we observed, like was this a glucose measurement or a blood pressure or uh, a number of pack years of smoking history, that observation code is bound to this value set here called LOINC codes, and the type of binding is example. So let's understand what this, what this means to have an example binding, uh, and we'll look through what the FHIR specification says uh, directly here. We say, example bindings. What this means is instances are not expected or even encouraged to use this specific value set, but the value set just provides an example of the kinds of concepts that are intended to be included here. Uh, and what the FHIR spec says is that these example bindings are used when the element uh, has a really broad meaning and we don't have a very strong consensus over what specific vocabularies um, should appear there. And so in the FHIR specification we have this binding to observation codes, um, but we say the strength of the binding or the type of the binding is example. Okay, so we know that LOINC codes are an example of what could be used in observation code. Let's take a look at um, this file itself, which is what FHIR calls a value set. Now in FHIR, a value set is its own resource, so the terminology infrastructure is modeled in FHIR, just the way that clinical data are modeled uh, in FHIR. And every value set that is part of the core FHIR specification has a page dedicated to that value set that includes um, a, a one-shot view over many of the important details. So every value set has a canonical URL. So if I want to refer to this value set um, in an unambiguous way that is durable over time, this is the URL that I should be using for, for the value set itself. Um, and then every value set has a version and a title and a definition. Um, 
And if you want to look at what this, what this appears as in the fire format, I can render this value set resource as JSON. And you can see this is a resource uh, whose type is value set, and it has this canonical URL and this name and this title. So this information corresponds to much of what we saw on the previous page. But this page is also extremely helpful because it includes some information that is not baked into the value set itself. It includes a set of links to everywhere in the fire specification that this value set uh, is used. And so this um, loink value set is used in um, maybe uh, 20 different places in the fire specification, mostly in resource profiles uh, as an example binding. Um, so that's a quick view of the, the page that shows me this value set. Uh, and then importantly, it's also possible to take a fire value set and explicitly expand or enumerate the different codes in the value set. So what we have here is the first 1,000 codes in Link. This is not meant to be a complete view, but it's very helpful for developers who want to get a quick sense of what this value set is all about. And you can page through it and see um, in no particularly relevant order, here is a set of different codes that are sort of the first 1,000 things listed in Link. They're basically laboratory uh, or observational codes. So this resource here that we're looking at is called the value set resource. It's one of Fire's terminology resource types. There's one other very important resource type that has to do with terminology that I want to point out at least briefly, um, which is the code system resource. Now, these two concepts can be kind of similar, and folks might sometimes get confused about why Fire has something called a value set and also something called a code system, uh, both as separate resources. But the simple way to say it is that a code system it is a resource that declares the existence of and describes a code system uh, and optionally defines part of its content. And so these are systems that are maintained by some organization that define a set of concepts together as a unit. So for example, um, LOINC defines a set of codes and you could think of all the LOINC codes in the world as being the LOINC code system. And you can represent that in Fire using the code system resource. Uh, similarly, you could think of all the SNOMED codes in the world as being a code system and represent that using the FIRE code system resource. But code systems are about declaring that a set of concepts all exist. And value sets, on the other hand, are about picking out a particular subset of those, uh, of those concepts and saying where or how they should be used in different FIRE data elements. And so what we see when we look at this LOINC value set is actually kind of interesting. Um, we, we looked at the value set itself. Um, and when we look at the fire representation of this value set, we were looking at that JSON payload. Uh, there's actually a definition for it. It says you can computably know how to create this value set, which codes to include, by including all the codes whose system is link.org. So that gives us a sense of how you could take a code system and from it learn which of those codes to include in this particular value set. And, and the answer here is it's simple. You just include all of them. Uh, but the implication is that there's a corresponding code system resource in the FHIR specification uh, that defines uh, those kinds of terms. It may or may not be manifest directly in the FHIR spec, but let's take a, a look at least and see if we can find um, some examples of what a code system looks like. Um, so these are a few examples of code systems that come built into the FHIR specification, um, simply as examples. Hmm. So let's go back then to our observation and review what we know about how these terminologies are used. We can see that observation code is bound to that link code value set as an example. And that link code value set draws every concept that exists from the link code system. So it's basically anything that you can code in link. Uh, it's a good example of where the value set and the code system are sort of one to one. You've got a code system and you've got a value set that includes everything from it. But there are probably other examples that we can look at um, that have different relationships. So one of these examples would be body site. So let's see how these body sites are defined. 
And what we're going to look at here is another example binding, but this time to a set of SNOMED CT body structures. So let's see what that looks like. Here's the value set called body site. Um, and so we don't have to go through the details about how this is represented because we've sort of been through this already, but we know it has a title and a definition. And we can see a bunch of places in the fire specification where body site is used as a, as a binding. It appears to always be used as an example binding when it appears in the core fire spec. And we can see, you know, a body site could be lots of things. Again, more than a thousand codes. And all these codes come from SNOMED CT. So why is this any different than the example we just looked at from Loink? Well, here's the difference. Um, in Fire, we've got this SNOMED CT code system, which uh, defines every code in SNOMED CT. Um, but this particular value set does not include all the codes from SNOMED CT. It only includes the subset of codes that actually are body sites. And so this value set is a subset of the SNOMED CT code system. And we can see that here in the official definition. We compose this value set, set by including not every SNOMED code, but a filtered subset of SNOMED codes, uh, specifically things that are, are um, sitting below this particular concept in the SNOMED CT hierarchy. And I think this concept is probably the anatomical or body site. If we just Google for this, we may be able to find a, a quick answer. So yeah, that's the root concept in SNOMED CT representing a body structure. So that's an example where the value set itself doesn't correspond one-to-one -one with a code system, but it represents a subset of the codes uh, in a code system. But value sets don't need to come from a single code system. Some of the most interesting value sets actually draw on different concepts from different code systems. So for example, if I was building a profile that had to do with uh, diabetes data, I might produce a value set that captured many different codes for aspects of diabetes from all kinds of different code systems. And I could publish that value set about diabetes and it would include codes from all those different source code systems. Uh, and that's an example of how a value set doesn't need to be one-to-one, -one, doesn't need to be a subset of a single code system, but can accumulate and draw together specific codes or concepts from a variety of code systems. So we've looked at example bindings now. We've looked at a few different types of value sets. Let's think about some of the other terminology binding types. Uh, and we started at sort of the weakest level, which is an example. Uh, and we can sort of walk up the chain, thinking about extensible and preferred and required uh, as other types. So let's get oriented here. This is the fire terminologies.html page that lists these different binding strengths. Um, and this is sort of what to have in mind from the least constrained all the way on up to the most constrained. So we've looked at examples. Now let's think about what is a preferred binding strength. Uh, so this preferred binding strength is used in the fire spec uh, in places where you want to encourage instances to use the concepts from a particular list. So it's a stronger statement than just these are examples. It says, these are, these are good examples. These are practices that you should follow, uh, but you're not required to use codes from this preferred um, binding. Extensible is a bit stronger, uh, and this is kind of a subtle one. Uh, let's just look at the headline here. So extensible means that the concept here shall be used, shall be drawn from the specified value set if there is something applicable in the value set. And so it's kind of a, a funny conditional requirement, but an extensible binding is stronger than preferred. It's not just that you should use a code from this value set, it's that if there is a relevant code in the value set, then you must use it. And only in the case where there's nothing in the value set that sort of serves your purpose, well then it's acceptable uh, to use a, a concept from outside of the value set. Um, and then there's some interesting key language here, which says this sort of idea of, if the value set doesn't cover the concept based on human review, uh, so it can be very difficult to know whether a specific uh, concept in instance data is conformant with this extensible binding or not. Uh, if it comes from the right value set, then you know it's conformant, um, that's easy. If it doesn't come from this value set, well, that might be because there is no concept in the value set, in which case that's acceptable. Or it might just be somebody wasn't aware that there was a good code, or somebody uh, was lazy, or somebody just chose not to use this value set, and that would be considered an error in fire. 
So that's what an extensible binding means. Uh, and then finally, there's the, the required binding, which is the strongest. Uh, and this means that uh, instances shall use a value from this set. There's, there's no, really no choice about it. The value set defines the entire uh, set of options that you've got. And so when we looked at the patient resource, for example, we saw patient.gender is uh, a required binding. And very typically, when we see these required bindings, we'll be talking about uh, an element that appears in Fire as a code. You don't need all the extra metadata about systems or versions uh, that you get from things like the concept or, or codable concept data types, because there's only ever one choice. And so that's why we'll typically um, use a code data type when we see a required binding in a core element. In general, when FHIR workgroups or HL7 workgroups are building out these binding decisions in the specification, the goal is to use the highest level of binding that we can get consensus for. And so if it's possible to get agreement worldwide for all use cases about one restricted value set, we'll go ahead and make this a required binding. Uh, it's pretty unusual. There's, there's really not that many fields in FHIR that have this level of binding, but it's very valuable when we can get it. Extensible has to do with when we think that there's a, a value set that is really the best option to use, uh, but it might be incomplete. Uh, and preferred is really just a nudge. An example isn't even a nudge. Often what you'll see, though, is a set of bindings that are defined one way in the core specification and another way in an implementation guide. So let me show you an example of that. Um, here in the core specification, we, we've looked at observation.code, and we saw that it was an example binding to this value set of link codes. Now let's look at the Fire US core profile on this observation resource. Here's Fire US core. We're going to look at the observation profile, uh, or specifically, let's look at one of the observation types, like a lab result. And now when we drill into um, the specification here, we'll see that observation.code here uh, has an extensible binding to link codes. So it's the very same data element, observation.code. It's the very same value set, link codes. But the binding strength has been increased. In the core spec, it was an example binding strength only, so very weak. And here in the Fire US Core Implementation Guide, that has been upgraded or strengthened to an extensible binding type. Uh, and that is to say, anyone who is implementing a, a FHIR data stream that is compliant with US Core must draw lab observation codes from LOIC, unless what they're trying to communicate is something that doesn't exist in LOIC. Uh, and LOIC is quite broad and it's, it's updated routinely, so it really does cover the, the vast majority of clinical data that flow over the wire. So that was a, a quick view through some of the core FHIR resources that represent terminology. So we looked at value sets, and we looked at code systems and the relationship between those two resources. And then we looked at binding strengths, the way that a value set can be attached to a specific element in FHIR, uh, and thought a little bit about how FHIR work groups and, and how different profile authors use these tools to establish as much agreement as possible um, and drive towards as much consistency as makes sense for the communities that are using these different resources. So there we'll wrap up our session on terminology.